Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to be doing another suppressor video and today we're talking about what I think is gonna be a pretty interesting one. It's one that I was honestly not super familiar with until very recently and that is the CGS. This one specifically is their Helios. Uh, it's one of their QD ones. They also have a direct thread version of the Helios. This is the QD. Um, this was sent to me by Silencer Shop, so I wanna start by saying I really appreciate Silencer Shop uh, being able to open up that uh, program again where they get to send me suppressors for two weeks at a time and then uh, I bring this information to you. But I had a chance to try this on a bunch of different guns in a couple different configurations, um, which I think is one of the things I'll be talking about the most is the versatility of this thing. Um, just to get a good feel for this suppressor before coming and talking to you guys about it. So first of all, I thought it was kind of weird. They, they describe this as a 5.56 suppressor. Every product page I saw for this, every video I saw for this described it as a 5.56 suppressor. However, it is actually overboard to 30 caliber. Now I haven't had a chance to talk to CGS about it. Basically the way I interpret that is where a lot of 30 caliber cans are designed for 30 caliber bullets and they just happen to also work on 5.56. This one is specifically designed for the gas pressure and gas flow of a 5.56 bullet, and it just happens to be able to also accommodate other calibers. Now, one of the coolest things about that is this thing, according to CGS, has no barrel length restrictions whatsoever. Uh, so apparently you can put this on a short of a 5.56 barrel as you want, and it's also full auto rated. They did do a test, I think it was on a 249, um, one of the uh, squad automatic weapons, um, just burning a belt through this thing, and it handled it just fine at least again, according to the video that I saw. So that in of itself is a pretty neat thing. However, it definitely comes at a cost and that's literally the cost of the suppressor, which we will touch on later in the video. So um, I wanna talk about what comes in the box with this suppressor. So let me go grab the box for the suppressor. So it does actually come in a nice locking hard case. Uh, it's an SKB case um, and it's got kind of a nice little shadow box thing going on here where it's got a slot for each accessory, including the suppressor itself. Now, um, being that this thing is overboard to 30 caliber, it does also come with a uh, 5 8 by 24 muzzle device in case you wanted to run this on a 308, 300 blackout, anything like that. And it comes with two different end caps. This end cap that I have currently attached is more of a flow through end cap. Um, I apologize if there's wind noise going on right now. That's just something we're gonna have to deal with. Um, so this is gonna act more like a flow through suppressor, which is gonna direct that gas forward out the front of the gun, sacrificing some of the overall sound uh, or volume of it, um, but reducing the amount of back pressure and gas in the face. And then a more traditional closed end cap, which is again gonna reduce the uh, volume sound, um, but direct more of that gas back in your face, which I definitely noticed and we'll be talking about. And then one other cool thing it comes with is this little adapter piece right here. What this does is this turns it from your QD attachment to a more standard universal industry QD attachment. So like for example, my YHM Turbo, that thread pattern will match on any sort of like JMAC muzzle devices, Griffin muzzle devices, anything like that. This makes it go from its own proprietary QD mounts to again, that super universal QD mount that's available on the market, which is kind of a neat thing to include. That being said, it does add about an inch to the overall length of this suppressor, which isn't absurdly long, but it's definitely not short to begin with. So you are gonna be adding quite a bit of length, but again, adding a lot more versatility. Yeah. It's, I mean, you some, but yeah. it's not like... Like, I can smell it, yeah. but I'm not, like, any other... My senses. eyes aren't burning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like I said, I've had an opportunity to test this out on a couple different firearms. Um, my 11.5-inch uh, SBR, which is a BCM upper, um, 
I tried it, and this is kind of where things were a little bit uh, interesting to me. So, um, currently that gun has been configured for my YHM Turbo K, um, and it's been running really well with that. However, the Turbo K creates quite a bit of back pressure for the type of suppressor it is. So, with my adjustable gas block, everything was tuned properly for that. I threw on the um, Helios with the flow-through suppressor, and I was actually not getting enough gas for it to cycle, which uh, goes to show how effective this is at directing that gas forward and reducing that back pressure to the point where it wouldn't cycle reliably. So I actually adjusted my adjustable gas block and then it started working just fine. So that already showed that this is much more effective at directing that gas forward than the suppressor I had been using with it. So I decided too to see, well, what does it do with the closed off end cap? And it was still too under gassed with the original setting. Uh, so again, had to open it up. So um, even with the closed end cap, because of the larger internal volume and the fact that it's overboard, uh, 4556, it was actually not allowing that gun to cycle properly. Once adjusted, it obviously worked 100% after that. Um, one of the other guns that I decided to test this thing on was my Beretta ARX100. And that's because prior to you know, this week, um, the only other suppressor I'd run it with, if you'd saw, seen the review, is that Silencego Hybrid 46. And with that can, I was getting an immense amount of gas back in the face, especially for a piston-driven gun like the Beretta. Of course, it's starting to rain now, so we'll, we'll just power through. Um, with the flow-through end cap, it was very, very pleasant to shoot. No reliability issues, no weird ejection patterns or anything like that. However, when I put the closed end cap on it, I was getting a bunch of gas back in the face. So the Beretta ARX100 seems to be a little bit more sensitive to back pressure than most AR-15s out there, again, given that um, I was having those issues. Um, then also I was running it on my 16 inch Midwest Industries rifle and whether I had the closed end cap or the open end cap, everything ran fine. That's just using a standard gas block, so nothing weird there. Um, I didn't have to make any adjustments with its standard carbine buffer. It was running just fine with this on there. And I guess it's worth mentioning that that gun is already a little bit over gassed as it is. So the fact that it was still able to run reliably with the suppressor, once again, goes to show that it's not getting an excessive amount of gas back through the, uh, through the suppressor and into the gun to then stop it from cycling correctly. Now, all of this stuff does come at a pretty tremendous cost. These suppressors, the MSRP on these guys, is about $1,500. Um, now, again, you do get some versatility there. Uh, you get different end caps. It comes with a couple muzzle vices. It comes with a hard case. But $1,500 is a lot of money, even for a fairly versatile suppressor. Now, there is some stuff going on here. They put a special coating on this that's supposed to reduce carbon buildup. Um, it's, uh, I think it's like 3D printed in Canel or something like that. Um, the, the design is such that the serial number and everything's way, way, way back here. So if you do damage the suppressor, it's easy to replace. But again, at $1,500. Now, if money is no object and you like to flex on the pores, this seems to be an excellent suppressor for that role. Um, but if you're like me and you have to be a little bit more frugal, um, maybe there's some other options out there that will get you kind of similar um, results at a much more easy to swallow cost. But again, if you can afford this thing, this seems to be a really good suppressor. Now, I didn't test it on any 308s. I didn't test it on a 300 Blackout. Um, so I can't speak to how well it does on those other calibers, but I can say it seems pretty effective on a 5.56. Now, as far as like tone and sound quality and all that of this thing, it's really hard for me to gauge that. The range I'm shooting on today, uh, courtesy of GB Guns, they invited me to come out here and uh, use their home range because my home range is kind of being a bunch of fuds. Anyway, um, the way that this range is set up, it's kind of a, a bowl shape, so we're getting a lot of sound back, so it's really hard for me to gauge this thing compared to other suppressors I've used just because the environment is so different. I honestly didn't even bother trying to shoot it without ears on just because if you've shot 5.56 suppressed, you know it, it just doesn't suppress well. But the tone was good um, from what I could tell. It's not like this really sharp, irritating pitch. Um, it's more of a deeper tone, so that's kind of nice. Um, but again, I can't speak to how hearing safe it is. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it's probably not hearing safe. If you're even doing a, a large amount of shooting with a 5.56 suppressor that is hearing safe, you still wanna wear hearing protection. So um, again, I, I think that this is a really good suppressor and it does 
a lot of good things with giving you versatility of whether you want that flow through or whether you want that sound suppression and have it act as a typical suppressor. The other cool thing is, as I understand it, CGS will be coming out with different end caps in the future that'll kind of split the difference between the flow through and the closed off end cap to get you a kind of a more median feeling. And again, the fact that they are already including other tail caps back here to allow you the versatility of using other mounts. Um, that's a really good sign, and I'm definitely interested to see where these things continue to go in the future with that level of versatility. But again, it's a pretty significant expense right out the gate. And I'm just gonna throw my own little pet peeve in here. Um, I really like it when suppressor manufacturers include tools in the box. If I'm spending $1,500 on a can, I would really like it if they would include a tool that would allow me to get onto the body of the suppressor and then a tool to get me either onto the end cap or the muzzle device to be able to break things loose if things do get carbon build up. I had a heck of a time trying to get this end cap off at one point today. I'd use a strap wrench and if I'm spending $1,500 on a can, just give me two hunks of metal that are cut to these dimensions so I can break the torque there. Kind of a minor gripe, but a gripe nonetheless. Um, but. That's kind of where I'm at with this thing. If you guys have experience with the CGS suppressors, they do have a bunch of other calibers out there. Um, definitely let me know whether it's the Helios or one of their other suppressors out there because they're pretty new to me and I really want to see what other people's experiences have been. And if you've run this specific suppressor on a 30 cal gun, definitely let me know how that feels uh, so that people watching this video can get your experience as well. Um, now that Silence Shop is a CGS uh, dealer. I definitely plan on trying more of these out. I definitely want to try out their 22 can because this has been a very promising experience and I want to see how their other calibers do. Um, but we'll kind of see how that goes. And again, if you guys have interest in the CGS brand, definitely let me know and I will talk to Silencer Shop about getting more of their suppressors in. So once again, I want to say thanks to Silencer Shop for sending out this suppressor to review. It's nice having that kind of um, independent third party company send me out these products because then I don't feel obligated to say beneficial things about CGS. I get to tell you guys what I think, not that I would change my opinion either way. Um, so thanks to Sancho Shop for that. Um, I've been saying for years that they make the process the easiest to do uh, suppressors, uh, like the Form 4s. Um, that's how I've filed all my suppressors so far. So it's I'm, you know, putting my money where my mouth is on that, so to speak. Um, so if you guys have any interest in these suppressors or others, definitely check out the Silencer Shop website um, and check out the CGS website uh, for more information on these. And there are other people who've done reviews on these. So definitely get as broad a spectrum of opinions on suppressors as possible because that's a significant investment to make on my word alone. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go and throw those in the comment section down below. Uh, I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. If you do feel so inclined, I do have a Patreon page if you want to go over there, post all the content early. We do live streams, we have a Discord server, all that kind of stuff. That again, helps me separate myself from companies so that I am beholden to my viewers as much as possible. And then last but not least, I wanna thank once again, GB Guns for allowing me to come out to their range. And in fact, you don't know this, but it's actually holding up an umbrella so that my camera doesn't get wet. So I really appreciate what you're doing. Um, but anyway, with all that being said, as always, I hope you got something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.